So today we're gonna to talk about a category of 3D printed products that have been made. They are the B-Friends, which are a whole category of office organizers that are really fascinating because it's such an original design and so shows the potential of 3D printing that it's an excellent example to show anybody who's looking or interested in designing 3D printed products and doing it in a way that is both mass manufacturable and just beautiful. So Bene is a product design firm that focuses on very high quality designed furniture for offices. Now, this is a very interesting story because B Friends is actually a series of products that was sort of created by a company named Batchworks. And Batchworks has been producing these products for a while, but now they're partnering with Bene to create a new category of products that can be manufactured with 3D printing and partially designed by Pearson Lloyd. These are fantastic products because number one, they look beautiful. But number two, they have none of the issues that many people whine about with 3D printing. Many people point to the layer lines and say, those are terrible. The B Friends products lean into the layer lines and instead of trying to hide them, they actually accentuate them. They use extra large nozzles to produce these parts and leave really distinct layers. So they almost look like pottery coil pots, which are just beautiful. But they've taken the vase mode of 3D printing, which is just to take the outline of a 3D model. And from that outline, they're creating structure and organization and compartments and creating a visual style that many people just don't get to. So it looks completely unique because it cannot be manufactured any other way. You cannot get that texture you can not get that look. You cannot extrude many of those shapes with traditional manufacturing. And if you did, they'd look like cookie cutters and they'd be garbage. The very fact that you have that texture and that 3D printed look makes them premium. Now, the other benefit here is that Pearson Lloyd and Benet and Batchworks are all able to work together to create a very large number of SKUs very affordably. All of these parts can be produced reliably and they use the nature of the 3D printer itself to do something very interesting. This can be applied in all other kinds of different categories too. I mean, we have furniture that has been designed this way. 3D printed houses pretty much use this type of methodology where you have a very thick layer of additive work being done to create that actual distinct look. Now, these products, like I say, have been around for a while, but it's so nice to see someone actually designed products around a feature of 3D printing and created a premium product that has never existed before, but is now mass manufacturable. And you should go look at them. You should learn from them and recognize what can be done by using 3D printing to create really fantastic consumer products that end users will enjoy and love and appreciate. Today we're going to talk about Tons, who is manufacturing cycling accessories with 3D printing. They are a Denmark-based company that manufactures hangers, organizers, and stands for cyclists when they're working out in their home. They are a wonderful minimalist Scandinavian design that actually uses third-party components from small wooden stakes to very small inserts that allow them to really upgrade all of their parts. And as a side note here, this is a really good way to make a product. Almost no product is made from one single plastic part, but what Tons does is they use basically the same part throughout all of their parts. The wooden stakes that they use in all of their pieces are just variations of length, which makes them very easy to manufacture while still maintaining a premium appearance and exceptionally high function. And this is really easy to do, whether you're making it yourself or hiring a service like Slant 3D to manufacture your products. Simple third-party components that insert and have basic assembly steps to put together, either when the customer gets it or within a factory setting when the 3D printed parts are completed, is a really good way to design a product because there's not a high manufacturing requirement around tolerances or assembly or processes. They're very obvious and very clear how they go together and they create a very nice looking product when they're done because everything is so intentional, but they still have limited inventory because there aren't 50 different screws to pull from. There's about two separate items which add value to the kit and create the finished, in this case, stand. So why does Tons use 3D printing for this? Surely they can manufacture these any other way. Well, actually not necessarily. The design of these stands actually does make them unmanufacturable by other processes. Additionally, since they're 3D printed on demand when orders come through, which is the best way to do it, there's no excess inventory that Tons has to maintain, but they're still able to scale up if they ever have surges in demand. And there's just less waste than traditional manufacturing. If you look really close at the stands themselves, you can see that grid pattern. That grid pattern is actually quite expensive to create with traditional manufacturing, which is why when you go to like a cafeteria, you you see just a flat plastic slab to hold all your plates on. But even more than this, and one of the most special things about using 3D printing in this application is the fact that they're able to modify the design. When they get a piece of customer feedback, they're able to implement it on all products going forward. And 
And if they have a new idea for their own modification, they can do it immediately. And this is really applied within their partnership service, where they have worked with a number of different brands. They have created custom trays that have mountains and trails on them that serve as maps for these cyclists, which creates a wonderful personal touch. And it's exceptionally hard to do to create all the variation that is necessary, but it improves it and makes it so much more special for the end customer experience. So ultimately, what Tons has done is they have created a very well-refined product that has few third-party components, but a few that really upgrade it from just a standard 3D printed part. And then they're also taking it one step further and really being visionary with it by allowing the modification to create a product that is truly unique and can be almost specific to the customer or to the company that wants to have it made just for them. So it's an awesome example of how to use 3D printing to produce real, final, real-world products. So Zellerfeld was officially launched back in 2016 by Cornelius Schmidt. At the time, he was working out of his dorm room trying to create 3D printed shoes, and he saw how 3D printing could allow for customization of shoes, so he started working on this. If you're able to 3D print a shoe, then you're able to eliminate all of the upfront cost of the creation of the shoe because you can effectively just upload a 3D model and then shoes can start being made, and you also eliminate the holding costs of those shoes. You don't have have to have warehousing, you just have to have a print farm that is able to grow the shoes as a person orders them. And then lastly, if you're able to 3D print an entire shoe using a material like TPU, every part of the shoe can just be ground up and then run back through a 3D printer at some point. It's very easy to recycle. All these were really good ideas that could give Zellerfeld the opportunity to really disrupt the way shoes are made. Now, why does this matter? Well, today, 85% of shoes are pretty produced in Asia. They're also generally multi-material constructs that have fabric on the top, rubber on the bottom, and a bunch of glue and gunk in between holding it together. And 3D printed footwear has the capability to potentially solve many of the issues with traditional footwear manufacturing. Now, the way Zellerfell has gone about skinning this cat is that they use standard FDM 3D printing in order to produce a fully TPU shoe. They work with independent designers as well as very well-known designers such as Yeezy to create custom shoes that you can't really find anywhere else. They're able to create a model of something very unique and then kind of limit the supply so that if you have this pair of shoes, you know no one else is gonna have that pair of shoes. And Zellerfeld has partnered with many celebrities in order order to perpetuate this idea of the brand and the exclusivity of it. It's one of the most brilliant things that they've done in realizing that they're more of a shoe brand than they are a shoe technology. But Zellerfeld has also used these celebrity partnerships and the exclusivity to help with a problem that the technology still kind of has. Right now it's estimated that it takes about 40 hours to grow a pair of shoes when somebody makes an order, and they currently have lead times of up to eight to 12 weeks. But that's okay, because since they are focusing on these very kind of premium, partnered, limited releases, they're able to allow the production process to have the time that it needs while still maintaining the cachet and the exclusivity of the shoes. It's actually a really good business model that allows your technology to catch up while still building the brand and building the business. As of today, Zellerfeld has had multiple releases and has many SKUs on their website. They have print farms in both New York and in Hamburg, Germany, and they'll probably continue to grow those as the demand for these types of shoes continues to grow. They have figured out how to make a shoe both very well and how to make people want that shoe, which are two very different and very difficult parts of a shoe company. But to both technologically change how shoes are made and figure out how to sell that actual product, well, that's the reason they're on this show, because they're a real 3D printed product. So today we're gonna to talk about a 3D printed product that is sold out at Urban Outfitters four times. So the original joint locker was made by a designer named Cash, who designed it to be an easy way to store both a lighter and a joint in an easy to carry package that could be put in a pocket or a purse. The design was eventually purchased by another room who reached out to Slant3D to mass produce these because 3D printing gave them the flexibility that they needed both in colors, design functionality long-term, and then overall design control as they wanted to evolve the product and change it as time went by. 
So when another room reached out to us, they gave us the baseline design for the joint locker. And while that baseline design was actually quite excellent, there were a number of issues that made it difficult to mass produce, which they wanted to do. So when we first got the joint locker, the very first things we started doing was kind of establishing a set of standards with another room. What was this allowed to be? And we ended up creating a QC document and an overall set of standards, which was basically, this had to be perfect every single time. There could not be any feature that was misplaced, no hair askew, no layer line protruding further than any other. This makes it very difficult to mass produce because it's very unforgiving in that regard. But the very first step that we did was to eliminate the challenges with the bottom layer. We talk about this in other videos, but the bottom we ended up creating a cavity inside of so that it has minimal contact with the bed, which eliminates the chances of staining or anything along those lines that can cause the bottom to go wrong, which was actually an issue in early batches. But then after that, we ended up readjusting the overall size of it, some of the dimensions, and then we ended up getting to the actual lighter socket itself. In order to get that handsome little pop, we had to do something with this hole. Now, not every Bic lighter is actually the same size. They will vary based on the company molding them, and it will also vary based on whether this lighter is full or empty. Those will both change how tightly it fits into a standard hole. That was untenable because we ended up producing actually a batch of the parts and realizing that lighters on one end of delivery would not fit into them even though they were verified on our end. So what we ended up needing to do was change these holes and create enough compliance in it so that it could fit the variants of the Bic lighters because having a solid bored out hole would not be a viable option. Fortunately, we have actually done this before and we were able to implement grip fins into this part, which would actually not have been possible with any other sort of traditional manufacturing. So 3D printing allowed us to create a really reasonably complex internal geometry with flexible features that are able to pinch the lighter when it goes inside so that it is comfortable and easy to pull out and work with, has a satisfying pop, and is actually able to deal with the variants of the injection molded lighters themselves. This is actually one of the primary innovations within the joint locker, which allows it to be 3D printed and have a capability that would have never been possible before. While there were tons of engineering decisions to create both the main part and its lid, it would take too long to go over all of them in this core video. The biggest benefit is that this 3D printed product was able to go from a prototype with a couple of 3D printers into professional production in less than a year. And now this version of the joint locker is able to be mass produced reliably enough to where an organization like Urban Outfitters is able to purchase these from another room at a wholesale cost and resell them profitably. So Printed Reef is making 3D printed accessories for aquariums, but how are they getting this done? Because a lot of plastics can actually contaminate and even poison fish. So how do you make a 3D printed product that is good and safe for fish, but also profitable and reliable? And why is this possible now? So Printed Reef does actually make all kinds of accessories for fish and aquariums. These products can be anything from coral stands to bristle worm traps to just brackets and things for the accessories inside of your aquarium. There's all types of objects and accessories that people need that don't really exist. And this kind of makes sense that there aren't enough accessories out there for aquariums. The aquarium world is a reasonably small market. So there's not a way for companies to amortize the cost of molds over all kinds of different products. If they make a hundred different products, they're gonna have a hundred thousand to a million dollars of molding cost across all of those products and they don't know how they're gonna sell. So most companies make one single product and then make it for five or 10 years until they do an upgrade in order to pay for all the upfront costs and expenses that. But 3D printing lets you now produce parts both at low quantities and at high quantities. Mass production 3D printing can produce parts as affordably as molding up to 100,000 or even a quarter million parts. So it's a viable way of doing this. So now you have a process that can do really customized and focused sort of niche accessories, but then also scale up when a product really takes off. And if you're using a service like Slant 3D and that kind of thing, you don't even have to build a factory to scale up to do this. You can just upload a model and then as orders come in, they can be shipped to your customer for you. So it makes sense that Printed Reef has been able to start appearing now and create these products because the technology has evolved to where it's now possible to pursue these niche accessories. And that's an important thing to realize. Niche accessories are a great 3D printing market if you're looking to create a product because there's something that people really need, really want, and really understand, and that you can understand really well too so that you can solve a problem for them that wasn't able to be solved before. But let's go ahead and talk about the problem with 3D printed plastics. A lot of people are really dubious of this because a lot of plastics are bad for aquariums. PLA, ABS, 
Many of these plastics degrade over time and can leach all types of nasty chemicals into the water that the fish are really sensitive to. One material that works well for these types of accessories is PETG. It's a nice inert material that's designed to be really durable over long periods of time to where you don't have to worry about contamination of the water. So that's something to be aware of when creating a product for a particular category. Make sure that you understand it well enough that you can actually make the subtle decisions really well. But now how could Printed Reef improve their products even more by using 3D printing. As I look at their website and look at the products that they have, many of them look like traditional injection molded type of products. They're thin walled, they're square, they're blocky, kind of traditional sort of design. If I was them and I was looking to improve this even more, I would lean into the geometry freedom that 3D printing gives to you. Instead of having a bristle worm trap that just looks like an orange box sitting at the bottom of the aquarium, which is fine, and people are probably used to that because everything else was molded for forever, they could instead make a trap that looks like a rock. They could take a rock, subtract their existing geometry from it, and then print that. And now you have something that not only has a functional use inside of the aquarium, but also looks invisible or can be hidden and you can put plants around it and that kind of stuff to where you can create decor and create kind of facades of these otherwise functional pieces. Instead Instead of creating a traditional looking mushroom cage or something like that, you can create something that literally looks like an organic part of the scenery, but still has plenty of holes in it so it functions as a cage, but looks like something else. These are all things that can be done with 3D printing because you can create both really thick parts that were never moldable before, and also really complex geometries that were never manufacturable before. So when using 3D printing, you always want to recognize the process that you have and don't try to design the same way everybody else has designed for like molding or machining, but instead designed for 3D printing. And then you can create all types of applications that were never possible before. You can create entirely new things that make your product so distinct from what anybody else is doing that you don't have to worry about competitors who are using tooling and molds. So ultimately, Printed Reef is a really great example of a niche that is scaling up where they can address a limitation inside of the market because there's not enough market there to sustain traditional means of manufacturing. But now you can create a lot of different products. You can create them with reliable and good materials as you're going through it all, and if you really want to full send it, you can use the capabilities of 3D printing to create something that was never possible before, so that you can create really differentiated products that are really, really valuable. Have a great day, everybody.